Okay, so you guys might be emergency prepping, being ready for emergency preparedness, and you might have all of these apparatuses for when the electricity goes out because you gotta know how to stay warm, cook, and have lighting. It might be a big kerosene heater, a Mr. Buddy heater, or even Crisco candles. If you have one of these emergency heat sources, there's one thing that you must have with it. It could mean life or death for some people. What you should know, coming right up. Welcome back to all of our subscribers. If you guys like news that affects you, prepping tips, emergency survival, how to's weekly, be sure to hit that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date. Let's jump into this one. Okay, so you guys know that I put out lots of emergency heat, emergency cooking, emergency light for when that power goes out. And especially going into winter, we're thinking about rolling blackouts. We're thinking about the power going out. Major crazy storms coming through early so some of us have a lot of options of staying warm when that power goes out now i can tell you from personal experience as i do all of these emergency heating tests there was one time i took it too far actually there was two times but i'll tell you about that in a minute let's get through the goods first a lot of people are concerned about having an open flame even burning wood inside they're like is it safe does it put toxic fumes in the air too much of anything is usually bad. So I get these comments all the time. Safety this, safety that, indoor safe. And a lot of times I reply, these are usually emergency preps. This is for if your power goes out and you need to stay warm so that you don't freeze to death. Especially some of these alcohol stoves, the Crisco candle. Like you're typically not gonna use this stuff unless you have to. So with any open flame indoors, there's always gonna be a risk. That's why many folks know that it's good to have a source of fresh air. But for some of you out there, you're brand new to all this. You know that you need to have a source of emergency heat or emergency cooking or emergency light. And as much as I wish that I've stressed this more so in previous videos, so important for you to have a carbon monoxide detector. And like I've said before in other videos, and specifically on a video on this, you have to get a battery powered one. They've got ones that last 10, 15 years with a single battery in it that you never have to change. And that's what this one happens to be. If you want more additional information on this specific one, I have a video that I'll leave up in the corner of the screen at the end of this video. But there's lots of them, a whole list of them. You can go to your local hardware store, find them there, I'll find a few that you can order and put them in links down in the description below. But like I said, guys, when you have an open flame indoors, you don't know how much oxygen is in there. And a lot of times you don't wanna open a window too much to where you're losing all of your emergency heat. That's where these little emergency sensors like the carbon monoxide detector comes into play. Now I know some of you guys are thinking, well, yeah, these Mr. Buddies, they have a low oxygen sensor in them. But you have to remember, that's technology and technology can fail. So having a battery powered carbon monoxide detector with your emergency preps is so huge. So with that, if you're part of our community and you have emergency preps, emergency preparedness stuff stacked up and you plan to have an open flame indoors, or I don't care where you buy it, but please have a carbon monoxide detector. It is such a cheap sense of security that I feel like everyone should have. In fact, just this last week, someone had wrote in on the comments and said that two people had passed away in California just this past couple weeks. And it was due to them running some sort of emergency heat, trying to stay warm in a power outage, I believe, and the worst imaginable happened through the night. You guys can't see and most oftentimes can't smell these fumes that are dangerous. And you don't always know your oxygen level. And for any of you veterans out there with emergency preparedness, please leave your two cents down there. I may be leaving something out. If you've got a favorite battery powered carbon monoxide that you like, please list it below. But help me share the importance of having this extra cheap device that gives you an added sense of security and safety. And guys, I feel like this information is extremely valuable, especially to a lot of those new people that are just getting into emergency preparedness. This is something that you need to share. Make sure it gets out there. Not everyone knows you should have a carbon monoxide detector. So like I said, if you guys are part of our community or watch our videos, plan on being prepared with emergency heat source indoors, make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector that runs off battery because in an emergency situation, 
a lot of times you're gonna be running heat through the night when you're sleeping. And trust me, these things are wicked loud. Which brings me to my sketchy story involving carbon monoxide. So I was doing a test, much like in this video right up here, and I was trying to see how many Crisco candles I could run in a room. I must have had six number 10 cans going. I was really trying to significantly bring up the air temperature in that I think it was about 250, 300 square foot room with just Crisco candles. This particular one right here saved me. Had I not had this carbon monoxide detector in that room, I would have probably been stubborn and stuck it out, even though it started feeling a little stuffy in there. What could have happened? I don't know. I probably could have got sick or died. Granted, I was really pushing the limits because I was testing these things. But with that said, I wouldn't have known it was dangerous had this thing not went off. And when people are trying to survive a winter storm, no heat source because the power went out, you're gonna be cranking about as much heat as you possibly can. And I don't want anyone to end up like those folks in California. So given that, if you have emergency preps such as heat like this, for your safety and a cheap sense of security, please go out and get yourself a carbon monoxide detector. And if you guys wanna learn a little bit more about emergency heat, because like I said, we're going into this winter early. We're probably gonna need all the help we can get because they're forecasting a lot of power outages, rolling blackouts, etc. Again, hit the like button if you guys found this valuable. Please share this. Keep prepping, keep learning, keep doing, guys. We'll see you on the next one.